Now let's put some attributes and operations onto our book class. We do this by splitting the rectangle into compartments and conventionally the attribute compartment that's going to represent the data in this class comes immediately below the title and the operations compartment that's going to show what messages this class understands, objects of this class understand, comes below that. Well, what data is associated with our book class? Let's suppose we've discovered that for each book we have to record its title. It's reasonable enough. And its title is going to be a string. We represent it like that. Maybe that's all for now. What messages is it going to understand? Well, maybe it has to be able to say how many copies of it are on the shelf at any given moment. It will give us an operation. Copies on shelf. Oops. Into space. Into okay. And that's also supposed that it needs to be able to understand a message borrow, which is the message that something is going to send it to inform it that a particular copy of it has been borrowed. So it's going to take a copy as argument. Okay, so that gives us the basic information about the attributes and operations that we, we have in mind at this stage of the design. Notice, very importantly, what kind of attribute we don't have. We don't have an attribute here to represent that a book object has a collection of copy objects. That's because if we put something saying that down here, we would be duplicating information that's already on the diagram in the form of this association with a multiplicity here. And we, don't, we try not to record the same information in two different places, if we can avoid it, both because it's unnecessary effort and because there's always a danger that the two pieces of information get out of sync with one another.